This is trigonometry section 1.5, more on identities. So in the previous lesson, we went over some identities regarding the six trigonometric functions, and now we're going to manipulate them and put them to practice a little bit. So the first example is asking us to write the following expression, secant theta minus tangent theta times sine theta in terms of only sine theta and cosine theta, and then simplify if possible. Okay, so what it's asking us to do is rewrite what I highlighted only using sines and cosines. So that means secant theta, I'm gonna replace it with one over cosine theta. Remember we went over that identity in the previous lesson. Minus, now tangent theta I know is sine theta divided by cosine theta. And then this sine theta, I'm gonna leave it alone. It's over one technically, right? Good, now notice both of these terms have the same denominator, cosine theta, cosine theta. So I can write it as one minus sine squared theta over cosine theta. Can we simplify any further? Well, I want you to always be on the lookout anytime you see one minus sine squared theta or one minus cosine squared theta. Why is that? Well, remember one of our Pythagorean identities is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And that means if I were to subtract sine squared theta, I would be left with cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. You see how I just subtracted it over to the other side? Boop. So one minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. So I can replace this whole numerator now with cosine squared theta, and then I still have that cosine theta in the denominator. And there's one more thing I can do to clean this up big time, and that's cancel out one factor of cosine theta. So now all I'm left with is cosine theta. Wow, that simplified rather significantly, wouldn't you say? Okay, so we're going to be doing more or less the same thing for the following examples. Use the fundamental identities and appropriate algebraic expressions to simplify each of the following. So big thing, like for a good first step to take is rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. So here we have cosine of x times tangent of x. So I'm going to write that as sine of x over cosine x plus 1 times sine of x minus 1 over cosine squared x. Okay, now notice here in the numerator, this cosine x cancels with the cosine x in the denominator there. So I have sine of x plus one times sine of x minus one over cosine squared x. And in the numerator, I have a product of conjugate pairs, sine of x plus one times sine of x minus one. So when I multiply that out, I'm gonna get a difference of two squares which will be sine squared x minus one over cosine squared x. Ooh, now look at the numerator. We've got sine squared x minus one. That's not exactly the same as what we had last time. Remember last time I showed you we had sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. If you have sine squared x minus one, that would be equal to, you gotta move this guy over, negative cosine squared x. And a common thing in math to just keep in mind, if the order of subtraction is reversed, then the sign changes on the expression. So one minus sine squared x is positive cosine squared x, but sine squared x minus one is negative cosine squared x. Here's just a good fact. A minus B is equal to the opposite of B minus A. Think about it with numbers. 5 minus 3 is positive 2, but 3 minus 5 is negative 2. 
Okay, so when you reverse the order of subtraction, you're adding in an, an extra negative, basically. Long story short, that means the numerator I'm going to replace with negative cosine squared x over, I still have that cosine squared x, and this is all just negative 1. Okay. Good. Now let's look at example B. I'm going to get rid of this. We need some space to work. And we have secant x times cosecant x times sine of x plus cosine of x over secant x plus cosecant x. So remember I told you just start off rewriting everything in terms of sines and cosines and usually the process will unfold rather naturally from there. So secant x, that's 1 over cosine of x times cosecant x, that's 1 over sine of x, times sine of x plus cosine of x. And then this is over secant x plus cosecant x, so that's 1 over cosine of x plus 1 over sine of x. Okay, one concept that has to be clear to you, hopefully from some study of algebra, is that this is a complex fraction, meaning we have a fraction within a fraction. And you have two ways that you can simplify complex fractions. One is by getting a common denominator and then performing the division. The other way is by multiplying the entire expression through by the LCD, the least common denominator. So I'm going to go with that second method. I'm going to multiply the entire expression by cosine x times sine x because that will clear out the denominators of those fractions in the numerator and denominator. So look what happens. When I distribute sine of x times cosine x in the numerator, it just cancels out there. So all I'm left with in the numerator now is sine x plus cosine x, whatever was in the parentheses. That's the only thing that survives because everything else canceled out there. Now in the denominator when I distribute, the cosine x will cancel in the first term, but I still have sine x left, plus, and then now, look, I'm going to distribute here, and now sine x cancels out, so I'm left with cosine x in the denominator. Okay, and then I have the same thing in the numerator and denominator, so this is just going to simplify to 1, and we're done. All right, good. Next example has us verifying identities. So when you verify identities, you're confirming that both sides are indeed equivalent or equal to each other. So you pick one side and you simplify and manipulate using your trigonometric identities until you arrive at the other side. Don't work with both sides at the same time. Usually you want to start off working with the messier side and then try to clean it up until it matches the other side. Okay, so let's start with the left-hand side. It looks messier to me, wouldn't you agree? And here we have cosine x minus sine x times cosine x plus sine x. Again, these are conjugate pairs, so when I multiply it out, I'm gonna get a difference of two squares. You'll have cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And then now I'm going to look at the right-hand side, and you notice how it's 1 minus 2 sine squared x. There's no cosine squared x in there. So I want to get rid of my cosine squared x. How am I going to do that? Well, I know sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, right? I told you you have to memorize that guy. Which means that cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x 
And then I still have another negative sine squared x. And now look, I'm basically done because I have negative sine squared x, negative sine squared x, so that's gonna give me negative two sine squared x. So I'm left with one minus two sine squared x, and that's the right-hand side. Bam. Okay, very good. Next example, we have sine of x minus cosine of x squared minus one equals negative two sine x cosine x. I think the left-hand side looks messier again, so let's start there. So if you have sine x minus cosine x squared, remember that means sine x minus cosine x times sine x minus cosine x. Now you can sit there and FOIL if you need to, but hopefully you know how to square a binomial. You square the first term, so this is gonna be sine squared x. Then you always have double the product of the first and second term. So minus two sine x cosine x. That's because you would have a negative sine x cosine x here and another one there, plus square of the last term. And then don't forget about this little negative one. Okay, so if you need a refresher, a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, anything popping out that we can do? I see I have a sine squared x here and a cosine squared x here. And I know sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1. So I have 1 minus 2 sine x cosine x minus 1. And then the 1 cancels out. And we are done. I've got negative 2 sine x cosine x left, which is the right-hand side. These will take some practice. Don't worry. We're going to do a bunch more identities throughout the course, so you'll have plenty of time to get professional at it. Okay, example C. 1 minus 4 cosine squared x over 1 minus, uh-oh, 2 cosine x equals 1 plus 2 cosine x. Which side looks messier? The left, you say? I agree. So left-hand side, here we go. We've got 1 minus 4 cosine squared x over 1 minus 2 cosine x. Now, you should have been working on your video assignments that have to do with factoring, and notice the numerator is a difference of squares. So it's a squared minus b squared, which means it factors into a minus b times a plus b. In this case, that means the numerator is going to factor into 1 minus 2 cosine x times 1 plus 2 cosine x, and then this is all over 1 minus 2 cosine x. Do you see what we can do from here? Good. Cancel out that 1 minus 2 cosine x. And then all we are left with is 1 plus 2 cosine x. And now we're done. That's the right-hand side. So all it took was some slick factoring, right? If you can factor, you're in good shape. Example D. 1 over cosine x minus 1 minus 1 over 1 plus, oh, cos, oh, and why did I say cosine? It's cosecant x minus 1, shame on me, minus 1 over 1 plus cosecant x equals 2 tangent squared x. Okay, again, I'm going with the left-hand side to start. It looks much messier. What to do? So here's just a rule of advice. I'm looking at the left-hand side, and there's two terms. And on the right-hand side, there's only one term. So what say you? We get a common denominator and add the two terms together on the left. Okay? So I've got 1 over cosecant x minus 1 
minus 1 over 1 plus cosecant x. Okay, common denominator is going to be the product of these two guys. So this first one I have to multiply by 1 plus cosecant x, 1 plus cosecant x. This one gets multiplied by cosecant x minus 1, cosecant x minus 1. Okay, so let's see what we have. I'm going to have 1 plus cosecant x minus cosecant x minus 1 over 1 plus cosecant x times cosecant x minus 1. Okay, very good. Now notice in the numerator, I have 1 plus cosecant x minus cosecant x plus 1, once I distribute this negative, right, over, and then I'm going to rewrite the denominator as cosecant x plus 1 times cosecant x minus 1. So all I did was switch the order of addition, which you're allowed to do. Remember, addition is commutative. So if I write it in a different order, it's still the same. You'll see why I'm doing it in just a second. Okay, look what's going on upstairs. These cosecant x's cancel out. So all I have left now is 2 over, and then I wanted you to see that in the denominator, these are conjugate pairs. Cosecant x plus 1 times cosecant x minus 1. What do we know about conjugate pairs? Their product give us, gives us a difference of two squares, which is cosecant squared x minus one. Now, anytime you see a trig function squared with a minus one or a plus one, you wanna think back, ah, is there an identity I can use? And sure enough, there is. So this is one of our three Pythagorean identities. Remember, 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. So since I have cosecant squared x minus 1, I can replace that with cotangent squared x. So I have 2 over cotangent squared x. And I know since I have cotangent x in the denominator, that's equal to tangent x using my reciprocal identities. So this is 2 tangent squared x, which is the right-hand side, and now we are done. Whew, okay, that was a good one. All right, last one, example E. Let me scoot it down. Okay, so example E, I have tangent x plus 1 over cotangent x, times cotangent x plus 1 over tangent x equals 4. Well, well. Okay, let us start off with the left-hand side. Okay. And it's up to you. You can multiply now or you can clean up some of the identities. Let's clean them up. So I have tangent x plus... 1 over cotangent x is just tangent x. And then I have cotangent x plus 1 over tangent x is also cotangent x. Don't you agree? So here we have 2 tangent x times 2 cotangent x. I know 2 times 2 is 4. And then I have tangent x times, instead of cotangent x, I'm going to write 1 over tangent x. These cancel, bam, bam. And then we're left with 4, which was the right-hand side. Okay, so satisfying. If you multiplied it all out first, you would still end up here. You would just have like a few more steps to do because it wouldn't clean up so nicely. But it's up to you. The more you practice these, you're going to, get like a lot of finesse and do them so nice and slick but in the beginning you know it can be a little frustrating so be patient with yourself and like I said we're going to revisit this whole idea later in the semester again so you'll have plenty of opportunities to practice all right that concludes the lesson and the chapter hooray good job chapter two is coming up next